Princess Gladiator. Raspberry Pi edition. You know it's time because I'm wearing the Raspberry Pi shirt that yeah. has the green leaves, it, which means it's it's two it's in the blackout. morning. <laughs> it's two in the morning, and that means there's a Raspberry Pi. I know. Released somewhere, so let's just uh, get let's right just to let's just get it. right to it. There's a so, new Raspberry Pi. Uh, new Raspberry Pi, and uh, Lady Ada. This is the Raspberry Pi. Let's do this. To W. Wait, it's the Raspberry Pi Zero Two W. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of letters. Okay, so it's a Raspberry Pi. Okay, so it's a single board computer. Um, so we know that. And it's a zero, which means it's the, you know, the skinny size uh, board. Um, they started with the, you know, the Raspberry Pi zero, then they had the Raspberry Pi zero W. And now there's the Raspberry Pi two zero W or zero two W. I don't remember which way it is. Basically, it's the second generation. And it's a little ironic that it's the two because it's actually got the same chip as the Pi 3. It's a quad core uh, chip. So, you know, it, it's like, it sounds like it's the Pi 2, but it's actually Pi 3 speed. So it's like five times faster. Um, and it's got 512 megabytes of RAM, um, but it's the same size and it's got all the same connectors as the Raspberry Pi Zero. Yeah. Um, so. so here it is. And it's also got a nice yeah. tin over the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth stuff. It's actually interesting. Um, Eben did an interview that we read. I think it was on Make. And uh, he mentioned, you know, a lot of, like, they really don't sell that many Pi Zero non-Ws anymore. Pretty much everybody, if you're going to get a Raspberry Pi, um, you're going to spend a little couple extra bucks to get W, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi add-on, which makes sense. Like, that's, it's cool where it's like you can have wireless connectivity. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to, you know, it's a little bit more work to connect and use the device. Um, and so not surprisingly, they kind of skipped over the non-W style for the zero and went straight for the W. So it's got um, the quad-core uh, Raspberry Pi 3 uh, Broadcom chip with the built-in 512 megabytes of RAM. It's got the micro SD slot for, you know, operating system and flash. One HDMI output port, thinking you can do 4K. Um, there's two... Um, you, uh, micro USB connectors, one is for power. Um, and this board does use a little bit more power than the original uh, Pi Zero. I'll show, um, thankfully, uh, Gareth did all the, you know, benchmarking and power measurements because I was like, I was going to do it, but like, I'd rather have the official numbers. Um, the other um, port on the Raspberry Pi Zero is for USB gadget. It can be used either as a USB peripheral where it acts like a USB device, or you can use a little USB um, host adapter dongle that converts it to like a USB-A port and then you can plug in, you know, an ethernet or a hub or a keyboard and mouse or, you know, what have you. And we actually have a bunch of accessories, some of which even have um, the micro USB connector already on it. At the end, there's a little camera connector. Um, you can use that to connect to the Raspberry Pi uh, CSI cameras with the cable adapter. We have a couple in the store. And of course, it's got the two by 20 standard GPIO in the same pinout configuration um, that you expect with SPI and I2C and PWM. Um, I think, you know, there's probably going to be uh, a little bit of time until um, some things like maybe the NeoPixel library support for this uh, needs to be adapted to, to recognize in this new um, configuration. And then we'll have Blinka support in a couple days as well. Um, but basically it's like a Pi Zero, but it's like five times faster, which is which is really the one thing that the Pi Zero, you know, was a bit of a struggle with. It was, um, it was the the same speed as the original Raspberry Pi, which made it, you know, a little tough if you wanted to do like web browsing or or you know, use it with Scratch or play videos. Now you got this little teeny board, and it's and it's fast enough to like you know be a computer. You can actually do uh, computation. You can definitely run emulators on it and um, they won't be slow. And it's a, a great little upgrade. You can just slot it wherever you used a Raspberry Pi Zero and it's five times faster. So I can um, go to the computer and I can go through some Yeah, and uh, uh, numbers. we'll have a bunch of uh, photos and more on our website and then also the products live. So what you do is just sign up and uh, we do something different than, you know, I think a lot of folks. Uh, we'll notify you the seconds in stock, and then yeah. that's when you purchase. Um, so it's yeah, it's not. It doesn't unusual. make sense to place the order now because there's a lot of things that may or may not show up immediately. But that's the best way to do it. Yes, yeah, so it's not unusual. America usually gets the boards a couple days after 
uh, the UK. The UK gets the boards first, of course, because that's, you know, where Raspberry Pi lives. Um, and then they have to pass, they have to publish the FCC certification and then they can import the board. So we usually get them like in two or three days. Um, and we do notify people in order of when they signed up. So um, there'll be a limit one per customer. Um, but if you sign up, I will say um, because of the silicon shortage, if you don't get it from the first batch, um, I, you know, I'd love to say like, don't worry, you'll get it later. Uh, it might be a couple months. Um, just I want people to be really understanding that uh, we're living through a, a global semiconductor and shipping shortage. And um, it affects everything, including Raspberry Pis. I know people have noticed that it's been tough to get Raspberry Pi 4s and Raspberry Pi Zeros. We do have a batch that's been ordered. Um, they're booked. They will arrive here in a couple days or you know a week or so. After that, it, it, it might take a couple months to get more. Um, so I just want people to be super chill yeah. and understanding. The fastest you'll get them um, is, in my opinion, since we do this, is uh, sign up. And just then, sign up, and when you get the email, yeah, place and the like order. we're we're pretty good about letting folks know. Okay, they're going to go in, and um, yeah, we'll have a limit, um, you know, so many per customer because folks like to a uh, very small number of people like to run it for others. They'll buy them all out and try to get them, put them on eBay or like yeah. whatever. We don't we don't allow that. So. Okay, so um, this is uh, from uh, Gareth. He he did a a nice um, you know specs uh, demonstration again. You know, it's the chipset is uh, the BCM twenty eight thirty seven, same as the Raspberry Pi three. It's a quad core uh, Cortex uh, one gigahertz Cortex A fifty three. Um, you know, one question people are probably going to ask is, do I need a heat sink? And the answer is like, you don't need a heat sink because um, you know, even though it's a quad core, it will internally throttle um, the speed a little bit. You know, Pi 3s, Pi 4s definitely, you know, benefit from a heat sink. Pi 3s, I never felt like they needed one. Um, I don't think you need a fan, um, but one of our little aluminum heat sinks um, on the chip, you know, probably get you like maybe 5% more um, speed at, if, you're, if you're pushing all quad cores computationally all at the same time. It, it's not going to affect, you know, just everyday usage, but if you're like playing, you know, uh, YouTube videos consistently, or you're doing like uh, a lot of emulation or anything that's like very computationally intense, it uses all four cores. Um, the heatsink could help. Okay, um, so here is the benchmarks for Power Draw. So this is the new uh, Pi Zero 2 is over here. Um, so you can see uh, the idle power is about the same, which is not, which is not too surprising. Um, there's not more peripherals on um, the Pi Zero 2. Uh, there's no, you know, Ethernet chipset. There's no USB hub. Um, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you know, unless you're transferring data, they're not going to draw any power. Um, so the idle, I mean, the idle power, you know, not, not too surprisingly, um, is about the same. When you actually start, uh, you know, loading it down, running software, the power draw is going to be about twice as much. It's going to be about... Um, looks like three-ish watts or so um, instead of, you know, 1.8 watts. It's about twice as much. Um, so three watts, you know, usually run at about five volts. Um, so we're talking, you know, you know, uh, 800 milliamps or so. So you can definitely, you know, if you have peripherals, um, you can run it on a, you know, if you have a couple small peripherals, you can run it on a one amp power supply, five volt, um, if you, you know, are attaching like HDMI screens and you want to power them from the same USB port and whatever, yeah, you get a two amp power supply. We, we sell the two amp power supplies and, and they're, they're plenty for this. Um, so there's definitely more power draw. This is, you know, especially when you're using the cores, important if you're making portable stuff. Um, I know people like the Pi Zeros for portable stuff because the power draw is quite low. So, it, you know, it will matter if you start loading it. Um, thermal. You know, it looks like uh, there is uh, thermal throttling. Let's see, extra power exit heat. So drop the clock speed of the CPU course to one gigahertz. Okay, so basically, I think the original Pi 3 was running at 1.3 gigahertz, and it looks like they dropped the power to the, the speed to one gigahertz. You can probably overclock it, and that's when you'll probably want to have a fan or uh, a heat sink. Um, but again, it's like once you start doing that, you know, you're you're kind of avoiding the warranty. You're, you're doing not what you're, uh, what the engineers recommend. Um, 
and this is a, uh, a a thermal camera. We we like thermal cameras, thermal camera image, showing yeah, all the power is definitely. You can even see the the, the you know the computational area or the RAM area of this chip. Um, it gets quite hot. The CPU is nice and flat. Again, you know you want a little heat sink, put a little heat sink on there, um, and you'll you'll definitely uh, be able to dissipate it out. And um, Okay, memory bandwidth. So you're gonna get way better, uh, and you're seeing like, you know, the quad core chips, especially the A53, um, you're gonna see similar bandwidth support. Like you've got this quad core, and it's a, you know, much better chipset, a newer family, so you're definitely gonna be able to push more data around. So that's good. Um, storage benchmark, it's about the same, not surprising. Um, your, your SD throughput is really gonna be uh, based on the SDIO controller, the MMC controller, and it's pretty much the same on all of these chipsets. I'm kind of surprised that the Pi 4 goes surprisingly faster. It could be like better caching. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Um, USB storage. Um, I think, you know, which, which Scott was talking about how on the Pi 4, uh, or maybe the Pi 400, you're saying that the USB actually goes through PCIe. Um, or something and so that's why you were able to get like you know USB 3 speeds um, folks remember the Pi 4 you know you have the USB uh, the, the higher speed USB ports uh, the Pi 0 has you know that one USB port and it's it's kind of the same speed as the Pi 3 maybe not so great for you know 100 gigabit Ethernet adapters but for most use cases it's gonna be just fine um, for Linpack that's a, a benchmark um, you know, you're going to see close to Pi 2, sorry, Pi 3 um, benchmarks. So it's not too surprising. So, yeah, you know, faster than the, the Pi 0. Uh, GPIO 0. It's interesting. I wonder why it's not f faster. Oh, it's probably because of the CPU speed. So the Pi 0 2, you know, almost as fast as the Pi 3. Um, I'm guessing all the times that it's not as fast as the Pi 3 for something is it's because it's the 1 gigahertz, not 1.3 gigahertz or 1.4 gigahertz speed. Um, compression, you know, anything that has to do with, with computation, um, the Pi 0 2 is going to do, you know, quite well. So you see it's about uh, half the speed, twice as fast. Image editing also, you know, looks like about twice as fast. Um, Gaming, I mean, looks like Open Arena doesn't even run on the Pi Zero, and then on the uh, Zero Two, it, it runs, you know, about 80% as fast as a Pi Four. And, you know, similar again, like, you know, there looks like he did like hundreds of little benchmarks, but basically the Pi Zero is, the Pi Zero Two, you're going to get like Pi Three speeds, which will be about 60, 50, 60, 70% of the speed of a Pi Four, but uh, very small and $15. So, um, a big upgrade, I think a lot of people who've made like little portable devices are going to really like this. Um, if you want to, you know, if, if you're just making a little, um, you know, pie hole blocker, maybe it's not going to matter. But if you want to like actually store something or display something or compute something, um, it's definitely a good upgrade. So I think you're not, you know, you're going to basically see people aren't going to get the Pi Zero W anymore for the same price. Just upgrade for the 2W five times faster. Tons of RAM, same shape, you know, why not? And, right? and for our, our world uh, and all the things that we do, um, S Scott's getting CircuitPython to do a lot of interesting things on Raspberry Pis. And so tune in on Scott's Deep Dive this Friday. Um, we'll, by the way, we'll send you one out, Scott, as soon as I figure out how many we have total. Um, here i have like one yeah we, i have this I, one i think we have this oh yeah do you want to show it in the overhead yeah it's like it's real it's here um yeah and uh i think it's going to be really neat to have like a very small powerful computer that you can make like it's yeah i think cute. this is a it's like cute bucks. it's pretty amazing where we're at with uh i think it's interesting things. that you know there's this five dollar computer but people are willing to spend 10 bucks more to get wireless i think that it shows value anyways do people have questions i mean i'm not that hardware engineer for raspberry pi but i can i can bullshit my way through some questions it's like 2 30 the morning <laughs> well i think I can... some people are wondering if it has like significant speed increases because you know they want to use yeah it as a computer it's, computer. it's about five times faster i mean it's yeah. not going to be as fast as the pi 4 
But from all the benchmarks, it looks like it's about, you know, 60%, 70% the speed yeah, of the Python. There was a, there's an interview on Make Magazine. magazine. Um, they accidentally let it live last night. And uh, I happened to read it. And it's an interview with Evan. They talk about like how they're becoming a PC company, all that stuff. As soon as it's back online, um, uh, Make probably um, isn't up uh, right now. Um, but when they when they release the uh, the article, yeah, um, check yeah, out like right. where they're going. It's a, it's a really interesting yeah interesting article. I'll uh, I'll do a post um, when but, I take a nap and get up and see see all the coverage yeah. and I'll do a roundup or something. The, the good news is all the accessories that you have for the Pi Zero, the cameras and the cases, they're all gonna work. You know, um, it still comes without headers soldered in, but it's inexpensive. Um, I think it'll, you know, I think it's fun. I think definitely, you know, I know people, have, I've definitely seen people make like cute little emulator type things um, with Pi Zero. So this will, this is definitely going to be a nice little boost. I think um, you can actually start running games or, or using it as a little mini computer. I mean, the Pi Zero was good, but it was really, it had that single board Linux computer feel of like, just like, ooh, like I'm running stuff, but like it's kind of yeah. challenging. It feels like the 90s. Whereas this, it's like, oh yeah, you can like decode MP3s and like you know download stuff on the internet, and and it's it's nice and, and perky. It feels yeah. it feels fast. All right, so that's it. Um, we're gonna take a nap, and we're gonna be right back at it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been a special edition of the uh, Desk of Lady Ada. Beep 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 beep. beep. Special. Mm, uh, I only wear this shirt for these specials. Special Raspberry Pi Zero Two W edition. It's gonna go back in the closet. All right. Thanks everybody. <laughs> Good night. Okay. That's that's that.